So maybe you want to start selling jeans on eBay, or maybe you're already selling jeans on eBay and you just want to expand out your business. On well, this show, we're going to tell you exactly how to do it from top to bottom in less than an hour. I mean, how cool is that? Welcome to the Prof Sales YouTube channel. I'm Prof Sales. And I'm Just Ask Karen. <laughs> and on this channel, we talk a lot about being an entrepreneur, about being a reseller, selling on eBay, Amazon, the e-commerce platforms, your mindset, your motivation, and just why are we even doing all this? Why are we even in business to start with? And <laughs> she just gave me a great <laughs> face. <laughs> but we're glad you're here. And sometimes we're sitting and today we're standing. We're standing. I'm going out of the frame. See how I did that? So I don't think I can do that. You can't do that. It's, oh. The frame's too tall. So um, we have a live chat going during the show. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we come on at two o'clock and we do a show that's Eastern Standard Time. And you can be a part of it because the live chat is currently going. So you can come in, you can interact with us. If you have questions, we'll do our best to answer them. And of course, if you have a question or comment you want to leave after the show post, you can do that as well in the comment section down below. But there are people who are in the chat right now, so we'll be interacting with them. If you've never been to the show, if you've never watched this channel before, that's what we do. Among other things. <laughs> so we're going to talk about jeans today, and it's going to be like a musical Friday. And you'll see, like, when we get to the end, we have. I'm not like, looking forward to that part. Yeah, we have a new um, jingle that we're going to try out. A jingle. Um, but you said we were going to talk about jeans today, right? Because we know a little bit about jeans. So I, I figured, I, I listen, ready? I wanted Jason to call the show Jeans, Jeans, Magical Fruit. The more you sell, the more we go toot, toot. Yeah, that's actually another song from another I had era. no idea she was going to do that. That is not on our sheet, and I just want to say that for the record. Usually you can tell when I go off script and off the grid because it's all the time. It's pretty much all the time. And it's random, but <laughs> away we go. So, all right. So you've got this idea that maybe you want to start selling jeans. Maybe you want to add it into your current business. You, maybe you want to do just jeans. And... The logical question comes up, I think, Karn, well, why would, why would you want to sell jeans? It's the first question I asked Jason, and I, I told you this this morning. It's one of my favorite parts about your story, and not so much, you know, what you did. Like, why do you want to do it? Like, not so much the fact that you worked at Gap and all that stuff, but why did you pick jeans in particular? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think there's a lot of um, reasons why I did it, but I'm gonna share some of them with you and why you might want to sell jeans as well. First of all, and some of you already know this, there's over 1 billion pair of jeans manufactured mm -hmm. every year on the planet. That's like- A lot. That's a lot. <laughs> um, so I don't know how many things you can say that there are a billion of them made every year. That's a small number. A billion. You just did a little Mike Myers there, uh, Dr. Evil. The average American owns seven a pair, and men tend to hold on to theirs longer. Women also own about seven pair, but they tend to cycle through them quicker. Jeans are dressy, or they can be comfortable. They can be for work, or they can just be for casual. They really have a lot of uses, um, um, and they you see people wearing them in all sorts of circumstances. Kind of ties into this idea that they are iconic. They're not going away, that's for sure. No, they've been here for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. You can't say that about too many fashions and trends and so on. Mm -hmm. And when I was thinking about what to sell on eBay and my experiences and so on, really quickly, the jeans was something that had a big, big market. And it was not going to, that wasn't going to change. Like, I'm interested, it's the Jeff Bezos question, not what's going to change mm -hmm. in five or 10 years, mm -hmm. but what's going to stay the same because you can count on that and you can plan on that. And it's possible that people, jeans would fall totally out of fashion and people would quit wearing them and they wouldn't be as profitable to sell. Mm -hmm. But I doubt it. Like it would, it would require a sea change, a cultural revolution, the likes of which we haven't seen in a long time. And jeans have kind of morphed along with our society, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and you know what's cool <clears throat> about jeans? Um, there's like a current trend, like the current fashion of jeans, right? And we run into that at the thrift all the time, like whatever the latest and greatest is of whatever brand it is. Right. But the neat thing also that jeans has that maybe some other things don't 
is that whole vintage thing. Like we're seeing a huge rise in popularity of mom jeans and you right, know, and they come back, right. Don't even get me started about vintage Levi's, like original OG 501s or something, right? Um, but they have that going for them as well. Yes. And to, to talk about eBay specifically, why eBay? So <clears throat> why would you want to sell jeans only on eBay? Well, you don't have to, but eBay has as of, you know, the date of this video, three and a half million jeans listings. That's a big category. Mm -hmm. That leaves a lot of room. And, and a lot of people will say, well, when you see a category that big, but I would say there's just a big market. A huge market and that's both new and pre-owned jeans yeah and, and it roughly it's roughly equal between those as a matter mm -hmm. of fact um and that's going to fluctuate some but with three and a half million listings i mean there's a lot of room for you and your the gene part of your business so for all those reasons and some others um i think jeans makes a really great business component and maybe even your entire business to get started yeah, we have a comedian in the chat, Debbie. Um, I really hope you're just joking, but a billion jeans in the death pile. Yeah, Debbie has a billion. Wow, that's a lot. And and for real, like if you really did, like hands down, you would win. That would be the death pile to end all death piles. I think. Yeah, you know, I, I equate jeans to to say, um, say you were running a grocery store, <clears throat> and you have to sell things like bread, right? Bread. People buy bread at the grocery store. It's a staple. And you're not going to make a ton of money on bread, but you're going to sell it every single day. It's consistent. And sometimes, you know, with certain multi-green breads, I guess, are more expensive, whatever. But Gluten-free, don't forget. Right. You get right. You get those little niches. But it's just one of those things you're going to sell over and over and over. And you're just going to keep making money on it. And that's why I like them. So how do we get started, Karin? <gasps> That's a great question. That's the like the million dollar question, is it not? Like, how do you start besides us just like a, being a broken record? Just start. Right, right. I think um, first of all, you need to figure out well where you're going to get them from. Mm -hmm. um, if you decide to buy, if you decide to sell jeans, where you're going to get them from? And some typical sources are thrift stores, consignment shops, sometimes yard sales, yard sales, estate sales, outlets, even clearance at your major retailers. Sometimes jeans, new jeans will go on clearance very, very cheap. And mm -hmm. you, there's a there's a market in between there what people will pay for them. And the great thing about those is, you know, they're new. They come with no defects or flaws. You don't have any issues there usually. Always be <clears> on the lookout for sources for sourcing. Right. Keep them, keep them up to date um, and just keep looking. You know, we have uh, something called Plato's Closet, for example. Not too grand for resellers. But twice a year, they clean it all out, right? Right. Um, so you can take advantage of thrift clearance opportunities as well. So certainly, the, your relatives even are getting rid of jeans for crying out loud. But point is, there's lots of opportunity. Just be open to open your eyes and search them out. Absolutely. And once you've figured out all these great sources where you can find them, and they're all around you in most places, if you just, if you just look, then you got to think about, well, where am I going to store them once I get them? Um, bins or shelves work really great. I like the shelf approach, but you could certainly put them in bins and put them on shelves. You could stack them in bins. There's different mm -hmm. systems. Just remember, you'll need some sort of inventory system. Just have one. Because jeans look very similar in a stack or in a bin because yeah. they're all close in color. So it's hard to pick one out from the other just by eyeballing it necessarily. So you definitely need some sort of inventory system that works. We've talked about inventory systems several times on this channel. And then you're going to need some supplies just that you would need in your normal eBay business. Um, whether you're just starting with jeans or maybe you're adding it on, you're going to need your normal off supplies, you know, printer and paper and labels and things like that, computer. You don't have to go crazy. <clears throat> like we're, I'll tell you this 24 hours a day, but use what you've got first. Like a lot of times when people will go into this and mm. they'll think they have to reinvent the wheel and they have to invest a thousand dollars to get this light kit and this printer and that, you know, make the money first. Don't put yourself in the hole trying to get started. Right. Just start and use what you have. Totally agree. You will need ways to ship them. And the easiest way to ship them if you're here in the U.S. is usually through the U.S. Postal Service and a flat rate envelope or I prefer the padded flat rate envelope even if it's a little more money. Um, but you're also, excuse me, you're also going to need some larger poly bags because some jeans will not fit in that flat rate envelope as we found. 
right? And arguably a smaller one too, or just use the poly bag for oh, that's big a good and point. small. Because some will go first class. Right, like we that's had what point. two or three size sixes the other day, and they were under under the under weight. a pound. They so would make we it. saved and made because we shipped them first class, right? Right. And in this instance, padded the PFRE, you'll hear that a lot with resellers, padded flat rate envelope. You get them for free. Right. So go on to USPS website, order them, and they'll come to you in this big, beautiful box for free. Yeah. And you can get in your quarterly shipping supplies. If you get the eBay coupon, you can get the eBay branded poly bag. So that'll get you started. So that would be free as well. Not free, but you know, you're not paying anything extra for it. Camera and lighting. Um, I think your yeah. smartphone is perfectly fine to start with. It's actually what we still take photos of jeans with. Mm -hmm. You can certainly use a DSLR or some other option, um, but it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And lighting, use what you've got. Again, you, use what you've got. Use the uh, sun I mean, for crying out loud. <laughs> well, you, you can, and you can you can use lighting in your house too. You know, the, mm -hmm. the incandescent bulbs mm -hmm. sometimes will play havoc with the color of a pair of jeans and really clothing in general. So you got to be aware of that. But if necessary, you can get, you know, a cheap lamp with a, a cheap... Uh, What's it called? Full spectrum bulb? Yep. You can get a full spectrum. Yeah. You can get the LEDs. There's different things. Just that, I think maybe you need to pay a little bit more attention to that. Not necessarily right. more money. Um, but if you have a stubborn smartphone, if you're using a stubborn smartphone, there's uh, a lot of, a lot of them now have an edit feature where it can auto white balance for you mm, or it can adjust true. the color. So it's an extra step, but if it's not doing its job correctly, then you're going to have to tweak it. So I think of all the things that we're outlining here, um, you know, that's important because if you, you know, if you're selling a pair of blue jeans and they look black on your picture um, and somebody's looking for, you know, that type of lucky brand jeans and they look black, they're going to just visually, they're going to skip right over that's them. That's true. So if, if there's, if there's one thing that you don't skimp on attention to detail of, I'm going to, I'm the photo girl. So I'm always going to come out. And here's the best part. On photos. What kind of budget do you need to get started with jeans? Not a lot. Nope. If I told you to go start selling iPhones on eBay or Amazon, you could need a budget up in the thousands very, very quickly. That is not the case with jeans. Even $100, heck, even $50, you technically could get started pretty quickly with it. Um, so you don't need to invest a whole lot. And plus, that kind of minimizes your risk if you go in this direction and then decide it's not for you. You don't really have a lot of money tied up in it. Um, someone asked, what are the proper lumens for daylight bulbs? Adam, don't get so hung up on that. Like daylight, white light in the middle, you'll hear that kicked around a lot. But around 5,500, anything yeah, warmer 5, or K, colder yeah. than that, um, you get more yellow or more blue. Right, um, but right. if you're getting the better bulbs, it's about um, the 5,500K. And yeah. that's a specific kind of bulb and they can be more pricey. But if you're going to your local uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, <clears throat> just get something called a daylight or full spectrum bulb. Or even an LED uh, will help at all. You can get shop lights nowadays, especially this time of year for yeah. Halloween. You oh, know, yeah. the what are they called? Like the long... It's like a shop light. I don't know what to call it, but it's like a long skinny light thing and you can hang it. It's a shop know. light. Yeah, it's fine. Tiffany uses a lot of those, um, but that's what you concentrate on. You don't want a normal uh, light bulb and you're not going to get a 5,500 Kelvin bulb um, at the Home Depot, by the way. You have to order them special. Yeah, I usually have to do that. So don't, don't go crazy on the lighting. Just, you know, start with something and, you know, even the lights you have in your house and then you can progress from there as need be. Um, so this all brings about the question, all right, you've got your supplies, you've got your budget, you've been convinced. What do we buy, Karin? What do we buy? Yeah, what kind of jeans should we buy? That seems like a pretty important question. Um, ones that are good looking and they are, <laughs> I mean, is that what you're going for? Like, well, we, I mean, we- I have should, her a disadvantage. She can't read the cue sheet because she doesn't have her glasses on. Well, and somebody, I think Debbie said um, to start with ones you even own. Like you can certainly try to, that's free. Well, technically, but we won't get into you, that. Right. You could. And what, what I, this is the exact way I started. I'm telling you exactly how I started. I had denim knowledge about denim in general, but I worked for Gap. So we sold Gap jeans. Big surprise, right? We didn't sell other brands. So when I started thinking about selling jeans, I knew I need to learn more about the brands that are out there and what's popular and what sells well and so on. So what I did is I started with 10 brands 
just well, now we got 20 up 10 <laughs> i started with 10 brands that i i just went and looked on ebay what had been selling and what mm -hmm. was you know and i i did some calculations i looked through some of the completed some of the solds and i picked those 10. i may actually start with five now i think about it but i'm pretty sure i made the list of 10. and this is what i did i literally would go into a goodwill mm -hmm. i would go up to the gene rack men's and women's and i would start going through every single pair now it's pretty quick it's like right You're, it's not a long time to look at one i'm looking at the label i'm looking at the brand and all i looked for to start was those 10 brands all right now the reason i did that is because if i were to stand there and look up every single brand in that store that i came across in a typical goodwill you might have 150 200 brands sometimes in the jeans literally that many potentially you're not going to have i mean you're going to be in there all day long and you're it's not that fruitful better to do the research at home mm -hmm. where you can you know go through a bunch of listings really quickly and sort list and and put lists together with parameters than to do all that in the store so i just focused on 10 that i knew sold for good money and were selling for um uh, you know, a, 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 at a reasonable pace. True story, full disclosure, at the beginning, I was not selling Levi's. And you don't want to know why I was not selling Levi's? They were beneath you. Well, that's close. I mean, I had this preconceived notion that they were a cheap jean. Well, there are some cheaper Levi's, but there's a bunch that are not so cheap, and they're the most iconic jean brand in the world. So even right out of the gate, I kind of muffed it, <laughs> quite honestly. And that's why i recommend starting with just 10 brands it will keep it you'll be able to spot those quicker and you'll be able to go through the racks really quick yes you're going to go past items that are really really good sometimes and not even realize it but you've got to weigh off your time here guys versus mm -hmm. you know your time in the store you can't be in there six eight hours really trying to look up every brand you, you'll be exhausted you won't be effective you need to get started so start with 10. If you can't figure out which 10 by looking at the completed and solds on eBay. There's other resources out there, right? There is. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see in the description of this video, um, we just put out a 101 Killer Jeans Women's Guide, which will um, drop on October 31st in a few days. We're very excited about that. Yes, we, we can't are. can't talk about it enough. Can no, we? and and it's a great, it is a 101 brand. So if you pick any 10 of those, mm -hmm. especially the ones that are, it's sorted by like, you know, how, how difficulty to find and so on. That's one of the parameters. So you can look up the ones that are a bit easier to find and start with those. Um, you could pick 10 from that and, and just start. And you're going to know some of the price ranges that you can sell some of these for. And then you'll start niching down within those as well. But that's a great resource. And um, you can see the link to that in the description. Yep. And when I first started and it was bumpy, because he, that's what Jason did with me. He gave me five brands and I did the same thing with my mother. Um, and it, don't beat yourself up over the learning curve because you can't know all the thingies. Like you just can't hold something up to your brain and just yeah. expect to absorb it all. And it's a, it really is, it works. I can tell you that, you know, other than the ones I wore or didn't wear or grew up with or whatever, um, my gene denim vernacular was not very extensive right. um, and it does work put it into practice and you won't be disappointed because once you master those five then you go to six seven ten twenty and before you know it like i bet if we sat here <laughs> we could rattle off like i don't know hundreds of and you know I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because we it's an advantage if you do have a partner because mm -hmm. she and i source differently now i started before her that's an understatement but she <laughs> she will pull or at least at the beginning she would pull mm -hmm. every brand that looked remotely cool or neat or whatever and i already knew that a bunch of them were sort of eh. but over time you did <laughs> say i'm recovering over <laughs> You're time anyway. you did you did start pulling brands that i had not found or done research on and they became staples of what we sourced all the time whereas mm -hmm. i was pickier and probably would pass over some, you know, so we kind of had a little balance there between us in terms of going through the store. And we, we grew in that ability, I think quite a bit from where we started. And make no mistake, I still challenge him on a daily basis. Yes, more ways than one. But, um, <laughs> 
But that's an that's a big advantage too if you do have a second person to help you, a second set of eyes. Oh, I have to sing apple bottom jeans. Oh my gosh! All right, with the fur. I told right. you it was going to be Musical Friday, right? So you've got your budget, you've gotten your equipment, you've got what to buy. Price, how much should you pay for these jeans? I'm just going to throw out a blanket statement. Try to stay around five bucks a pair or less. less. I'm not saying there aren't valuable jeans out there that you could pay eight, 10, maybe even 12, maybe even $15 in some mm -hmm. cases. There are, but I would say limit your exposure to $5 a pair. It will limit your risk on any one pair. Mm -hmm. um, because you're going to make some mistakes, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Oh yeah, and it will enable you with a $100 budget to get 20 pair roughly, and that's a good start. I mean, that's a good start. That's manageable. 20 pair of jeans don't take up a tremendous amount of room. You um, should be able to get those photographed and listed fairly quickly. So try to stay around five bucks or less if you can with this initial batch. And remember, that's what we're speaking to. We're speaking to and there's going to be some things in here maybe that uh, more seasoned resellers can relate or put into practice, but this is for people that are just getting started. These are some sort of elementary ideas that have worked for us, right? Yeah. Um, and so the, what, how much you pay for them? Like, what do you, what, what's, how do you, what do you say all the time? Like you make your money when you buy the item. Sure. So not real when, estate. Not you when make you it when sell you buy, it. not when you sell. Right. Mm -hmm. No, you're, no, you're exactly right. I mean, that's, that's when you're going to make the money. All right, so quality. Now, Karin, this is a this is a pet peeve. Not a pet peeve. This is like a, one of your favorite areas. It's a peeve. Just let's just say it. Quality control is like a thing for me, and you you know it. If Jason picks up a pair that has like in a <laughs> spot that it shouldn't be wrong, I'll be like, That's never "What happened. about this one?" Um, but yes, you have to go over twice, and you do this on purpose because you're not going to catch everything in the goodwill that has the fluorescent lighting up ahead. So don't beat yourself mm, up. True. Um, but again, you get into a habit, a rhythm of checking all of the things all of the time. So think about if you're buying the jeans for yourself, right? Top to bottom, you're going to check for quality function. Uh, does it have all the thingies it's supposed to have? So you're checking if the zipper works, the belt loops are in place, stitching is there. There's no holes or rips right. in them. Uh, you know, you got to check the crotch there. I said it because there's nothing worse in a women's pair of jeans to get home. And here you are going to take the pictures and then you sell them and you're like, oh, no. Yeah, that's a problem. It, it's a problem. And <laughs> it we've, happens. And we've, we've made that mistake. And we've even made the mistake like within the last year, just because I guess maybe we get cocky and we just are throwing all the things in the cart or whatever. Um, but it's important. So the way I approach it is what, what is going to work for me? Like right. would I wear these jeans? Would I buy these jeans? So a top, a good top to bottom. And then we recommend once you get home, you check again too mm. under a brighter light, just to be sure. Yeah. Cause we're, I mean, we're probably a little pickier than a lot of people. We are. Um, and if there's a stain, uh, instead of disclosing it and like selling something that's imperfect, uh, we won't. So we will dis. Yeah. We will. What's it? Disinfect? No. We will well, discard. We will. Th this is the thing. I, I'm not. I know there is money to be made in selling jeans with defects and flaws. I'm not suggesting there isn't. Yourself up for returns and problems with people. Picture your picture yeah. quality needs to be a lot better then. Um, because they expect to see full disclosure and a full description of what the issue was. Steve and I were talking about a video yesterday on the show. Mm -hmm. It was a pair of rock revivals. And the person had a uh, photo of the button missing because one of the buttons in the back pocket was when they had flaps. Mm -hmm. But they did not disclose that in the description. In the terms. And I it's gotcha. like when you sell that, that person can say, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't see that photo. So Careful. you end up, yeah, you end up dealing with issues like that. And when you're just getting started, I would say really focus on jeans that don't have flaws or defects. You will learn what's really a flaw and what's really not a, you know, the difference between mm -hmm. distressing and a hole and things like that as you go along or what's a big deal and what isn't. But at the beginning, I would be a little extra picky um, just because you don't want to set yourself up for returns and exchanges and things like that. Well, and where, and damage are very subjective. Just like you'll hear us talk a lot about, just call it brown. Don't call it toffee or coffee or 
Yeah. Bark. I mean, whatever. We're calling nothing even. Just take right. a photo and but say. But wear and damage are very subjective. And a small spot for you or a small bleach stain or a small yeah. um, wear on the cuff, like you can't, you can't minimize that and sort of play it off like it's no big deal. Because once you go down that road, you're allowing someone to potentially say, that wasn't, there was, there was no small, you know, scuff to that cuff. Right. You know, so try to right. be. Words like that, word, subjective words like that, like small or big. Or, Minimal. Yeah, those are words you really want to stay away from. Barely just noticeable. Say, hey, there's a hole here on the knee. Here's a photo. And then let the person decide. So, And we even have those pair of luckies that That's came kind back. of a little more, that's a little bit more advanced. If you're already selling mm -hmm. other items, you probably know some of those things. But if not, mm -hmm. uh, just they're things to consider. Good habits from so the start. So speaking of photos, um, some of the photo ideas that you might want to consider because people ask a lot about what sort of photos should they take of jeans. Well, let's think about jeans and what they what what one feature do a lot of people, especially women, consider about how their jeans look. I'm looking, the butt. I'm looking at my bottom. <laughs> We're not going to focus the camera there. So, <laughs> so the butt shot is a very common shot you're going to have in it. You're going to want usually a full length shot, at least of the front, maybe the front and back too, especially if there's distressing or something weird on there, some sort of weird color. Um, so the inside tags, that's a great one to have because mm -hmm. people ask you questions sometimes that you did not put in the description like, hey, uh, how much Lycra is in these jeans? If you've got a shot of the tag, you can just look really quickly at the description mm -hmm. and, and look at the photos and say, oh, it's 1%. And you can tell them, you don't have to actually mm -hmm. go get the pair of jeans and look, which is nice. Um, anything that's wrong with the jeans, there's other shots you can do too, but be creative. I mean, as long as you have a money shot that's going to get their attention, you know, one thing that we don't do is we don't put um, people in them. Like that's a little gratuitous at times. I know you guys have seen them. Yeah. Um, but something that'll highlight the gene. And right. if you can do the butt, do the butt shot. And there you go. Yeah. There's not like a right or wrong way to do all these photos. The one thing I will say though, and this comes back to your, your lighting again, jeans often can be tricky to get the color right. So, and there's tips for how you can get the color right with your camera and your, if you're using your smartphone or whatever. But the biggest tip I have for you with color and your photos of jeans is this. Make sure the color is consistent throughout all the photos. When you look at it, it looks like the same tint, the same hue, the same amount of exposure. Mm -hmm. You can tell if one shot's really bright and overexposed and one shot's really dark. You can tell things like that. And you don't want that because here's what happens. The buyer gets those or and they see the one photo and they order it and then it's really more like the other photo that you had and then they get it and they're disappointed at the color and you've just mm -hmm. set yourself up for return and there's no reason for that try really really hard to make sure that all your photos show the color is sort of the same shade and looks the same even if you don't think it's exactly the color that it is A brand photo that you scan yeah. from website well, or something. You can do it on new ones, but new you can't do it on premium. We're talking no. premium, right? Right. Right. I looked at it. I looked at a, a listing the other day, and, and it was a used pair of jeans, right? And it was like five different pictures for yeah. one pair of jeans. One was a, a like a stolen web one, and then one was like the front of a pair of jeans. But then there was another front of the jeans, but it was a different pair of jeans altogether. I mean, think about it this way: if you were buying a new car, right? you would expect it not to have dents and dings and so on. Well, after you wear jeans for a while, they get dents and dings, they That's get wear spots. Part of the charm, right? But if you've got a new picture on there, you're expecting to get an item that has no problems no flaws, whatsoever. And no you dings. get it and you're mm -hmm. like, uh, this is not the same as mm -hmm. what you photograph. So you definitely don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you, um, you stay away from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then after that, you've gotten your photos done, you've done your quality. What are we going to do now? We're going to get them listed. We're going to list these jeans. Let's We're going to light this candle. Put it out into the universe and see what happens. Make some money. Here's And here's what I would do in pricing. When you're first starting out, I would price within the top 20% of the sold. So if you've got a pair of you know Levi 505 boot cuts and you see that the most expensive one sold for 30 bucks, I wouldn't price them any lower than 24 to start. You can always go down your price. and But you know assume that you can get a higher price because somebody did. Somebody did get a higher price. And I'm not saying you're going to get the highest price, but you can get a higher price 
people get caught in this game of just trying to turn volume, and that's fine. But when you're one person and you're trying to turn volume over and over and over, you are going to struggle, especially when you're in a brand new niche that you don't know a lot about and you're going to have a lot of trouble sort of figuring out. So go ahead and price it higher. See if you can make a few more bucks on it. You'll be happy you did. It takes the same amount of time to list a $25 or $30 pair of jeans as it does a $15 pair of jeans. So you might as well put it up for $25 or $30 and see what you can get. You can always drop if you don't like it. So I always say list higher. You can do free shipping if you want, but you need to, you need to price that into your um, sales price. So mm -hmm. if you're doing padded flat rates and your cost as a top rated seller, we'll say is 630, then you need to think about that. Like you're paying for that 630 to ship it to somebody. And some percentage of those is going to come back to you in terms of a, um, you know, a return and you're going to, you know, lose that shipping cost that you paid. And that's all right. That's going to happen. But price higher guys, don't forget the shipping part. This is the great point about the padded flat rates or flat rate envelopes, whatever you use you know what the shipping cost is going to be for all of them. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time and think, oh, how much is this going to be to go to Idaho? And how much is this one going to Missouri? And you don't have to worry about that. It's the same price every time. And that makes your pricing for your jeans a lot simpler. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say something. Sorry. No, I'm just preach on, prof. <laughs> Do uh, you go. That's funny. Um, I'm, I'm funny today. <laughs> yeah. And I'm musical, apparently. Yeah. Okay, so uh, after you've listed all your jeans, then my turn, my turn. What are you gonna do? What, do we, what, do we, what happens? Sell all the thingies. Sell them all, you know, and and you're not gonna sell them all, um, but you you're gonna sell some of them, and you're gonna learn a few things. You're gonna learn. You're gonna get questions about some of your jeans. Um, the one thing I didn't t take too much time on here was measurements. It is a good idea to put a few measurements in your listings. Um, the waist and inseam and front rise are three measurements that are really just sort of stock measurements you can put in that'll work really well and get you a lot of sales and you won't have to, you know, just, um, you know, reinvent the wheel every time on these, on these measurements. But um, you'll see what happens. You'll, you'll sell, I think a good number to shoot for is you can sell roughly 20% of your jeans within a month. So if you listed a hundred tomorrow, you could probably expect 20 of those on average to be sold within 30 days, you might sell 25 or 30, you might sell 15, but I think it's a good number. And at this time of year, it might even be a little higher than that. It might be more like 30 or 35, just depending on what you're listing and, and lots of other factors. And then take that money and reinvest it back into the next batch. Because if you're gonna continue to do this, you're gonna need to build up some inventory. You're gonna need to build some inventory to sort of ride out the slower months, you need to build up inventory to sort of build your brand knowledge. You're going to have to learn other brands. Mm -hmm. And that's and as, as you learn other brands, now you start opening up a whole other part of the niche that you didn't, you didn't have with the initial 10. So that's important as well. So let's assume we just sold something because Adam brought up a good question <clears throat> that everybody asks. And it's, do you do free shipping or uh, do you do calculated or do you add it on? And do you notice a difference? And most people, da -da -da -da, drum roll, do not notice a difference. That's true. What and, say you? Well, I say this. I can't prove what I'm about to say. <laughs> so take it with a grain of salt. No way. You're going to go off the grid and not use science I am. and math. I am. Well, because I don't have it. I think anytime you make significant changes to your eBay listings, you get a bump in sales. Mm -hmm. Because I think it forces eBay's algorithms to somewhat re-index your listings and figure out, you know, it's specifically those. So you could even argue that doing free shipping for a while on some that you did not have free shipping on might give you a bump in sales. And then going back and making some others calculated shipping. I don't know, I can't prove that for sure, but it sort of makes sense that eBay is gonna have to go back in and re-index things around your, your listings and so on. And some of those items might get pushed up in search. Cause here's what's funny. I notice every time when I have items end and i change the price on them sometimes just by a penny i sell more items usually later that day not those items either other items now i may have sold those anyway there's no way to really know that but i think just in general the way computers and databases work when you re-index things when you cause them to have to re-index it refreshes your items somewhat it may push them up in search 
It may make them a little more visible, which is going to lead to more sales. I can't prove that 100%. So free shipping, calculated shipping, whatever you want to do with that, totally up to you. I don't, but I think changing things, and that's why listing works too. Like frequent listing is changing your listings every day. Like it's, you're getting re-indexed. I think that's the reason why those things work as well. Like they would reward that. I would think an e-commerce platform would reward things changing in your store, in your listings in general, just because that presents something new to buyers. And that's important. You don't want the same stale listings up there month after month and year after year. And um, I think it says simple to faith uh, asks about putting, if it's a junior size, if putting that in the title or put women's, if you know it's a junior's, uh, don't call it what it isn't uh, because, well, we don't sell a lot of juniors for one thing because the, the resell price is not as high. Um, but yeah, don't put it out there as something that it's not uh, because a woman like juniors are cut differently. Uh, so if it's a, like if it, let's say uh, if it's a woman's size and it's an odd number, usually it's not, um, but they're going to be fuller in the hips and it's going to be different. So do your best that if it is a junior size or a young lady size to call it what it is. And if it's a woman's size, do the same. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think I just explained, we just explained in 35 minutes how to start a jeans business All right, and so answer some questions. We're done. See ya. We're done. See you guys later. <laughs> oh no. God, the curtain just went. Wait. Yeah, the curtain went down. Uh -oh. um, no, it, it, it didn't. It's okay. just that the shot changed a little. Um, so, um, so if you guys have questions, please put them in the uh, chat and you guys have already been asking them. Um, that's good. Um, so, She's moving the camera here. We're going to we're going to answer some viewer comments here as well. And so we'll do a screen share for those in a moment. And um, of course, answer your questions. It's Friday. So the floor is yours. It's open. Huh. Um, but and, and large, I would put both. If it says it's a size 10, 11, put size 10, 11, because that's yep. what size it is. Yeah, I would put both. Um, sure. And just be just be I'm sorry, just because it has an 11 in it doesn't mean it's a junior's. So just good rule of thumb is whatever the manufacturers and you've measured it. So, you know, hopefully the measurements match up, but mm -hmm. just put what it says. That's the size. Yep. And you can take a photo of the tag as well, as we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. which is always a good practice. Anyway, yep. people do ask questions about composition of items. And sometimes I'll get asked, Hey, is this number on the tag? Like it'll be some model number that the manufacturer used. To. I've gotten asked that several times, you know, and I'm like, Oh, I gotta go look. And usually I've got a photo of the tag, so I don't have to go pull the jeans. So um, Melissa asks a great Real list or sell a similar on unsold items. Um, yeah, Adam says sell similar, but be very, very careful. And the reason Adam is saying being very careful is when you sell similar, you're taking someone else's listing and all the things they entered and then saying mm -hmm. that your item is that item. So it's very easy to make a mistake if they did. You're basically inheriting their mistakes and have to change it. Uh synchro in intricacies and and whatever so if they yeah. if they want to ship to guatemala whatever for yeah. free you know what i mean there's like, all kinds of things there's all kinds of little details i i wouldn't do it when you're new especially mm -hmm. i really wouldn't because i think the risk of selling something similar to mm -hmm. what you had and then that particular listing had something weird on it that's not true about yours or you didn't agree to or whatever you didn't think you were signing up for that happens to a lot of people um, and I, I just, I would probably just relist it to start. People go back and forth on that debate. Does it change anything or not? Hey, realist didn't change the price. That effectively mm -hmm. is going to have to make that item get re-indexed again. Change the price by a penny if you want and see what happens. So I would go that direction. Well, and as, as a new seller, if you're going to ever, whether it's in the initial <clears throat> listing or a relist, if you're ever going to choose the option to list similar, um, get in the habit of still checking every single field, every single choice, because you yeah. learn by repetition. And once you make that mistake, like, uh, like maybe the, the GSP isn't the only international shipping option that's there. And suddenly you've just signed up to free ship something anywhere in the world. And guess what? It's going to cost you 50 bucks to send a pair of jeans. So yeah. good habits, <laughs> repetition, go through. And it sounds tedious and a big pain in the butt, but how are you going to learn to get better yeah. if you're if you're cheating? <laughs> and you can create templates. Yes. Well, that's yeah. Yeah, but how are you going to know how to do it if you don't do it over and over right. again? Right. Well, but I mean, you can create a template that fills in a lot of your basic stuff, like I require immediate payment. 
I mm. give 60 day returns. I'm doing free shipping. Um, this is a category men's jeans. Boom. You know, so you've got some of the things pre-filled so you don't have to go in and reinvent the wheel every time. You just call up that template and then add it in for whatever your current items are. I don't think sell similar is much quicker, honestly. And yeah. I think you, and the other thing I don't like about sell similar is it still sits there as an unsold item until you delete it. So if you didn't, so if you forgot that you relisted that one, you could end up relisting it again. You have to be careful about that. And now you've got it listed twice, which you've only got one of them. So just be careful that, um, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I think when you're new, you should probably stick to just relisting. Um, let's take a, let's look at a couple of questions and um, comments here. And our first one is from, can you see this? I'll put on my glasses, it'll be grand from John Barry on our change Aww. your life by selling on eBay video. So John says multiple streams is key. I think I still have a full-time job, but after work, I list five items on eBay, then update an affiliate website. I started a year ago that makes commissions plus work on a non eBay YouTube channel. <gasps> All my streams are producing decent results and I plan on pulling the full-time plug eventually. Cool. It doesn't say cool. That's me just by doing a little work each day on, all of them has proven to be worth it. And the website is my biggest earner followed by eBay and then YouTube. Awesome, John Barry. Yeah, thank you for your comment, John. I, I, John hits on something there, guys. It's, it ties into just a concept in general that we've really started embracing on this channel. You have to have other streams of income in this day and age. It is way, way too risky to put all your eggs in one basket. So even if you're selling on eBay and you're selling jeans, you know, diversify off into a different type of jeans, diversify into a whole different type of category, go sell electronics, you know, platform, start your own website and sell on because you never know when something's going to happen that, that makes that particular stream of income dry up or be no longer, excuse me, available to you. So if that happens and you've only got one stream of income, you're up the creek. It's like having one job and then you get laid off. Well, now you got no money come in and you've got to, you know, you got to, you got to hustle to figure out what to do next. So having other streams of income, learning other things to sell, going off into other niches eventually. I think that's really smart. So thanks for that comment. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Let me pull this up. This one is from oh. Janetta. I recognize that thing. All right, so Janetta, lovely friend of ours, says, you are only as good as those you surround yourself with. Pff, I've heard this before. I learned this while climbing the corporate chain. It's really true because you learn so much from them. Thanks for another great video. Aw, and Janetta, friend of the channel, has been killing it lately. Yeah, and that's that's a great point, Janetta. I mean, you you are the, uh, oh gosh, who says I always forget? It's not, is it Grant Cardone or is it Tony Robbins? You know, you're, or maybe, oh no, someone before that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're the average of the total you know, of the sum total of the five people you hang around the most. Mm -hmm. And if you hang around negative people and people are always down on things, you're going to get negative and down. <laughs> it's just going to happen. It's true. Like you're not immune to those things. So you've got to find good business partners, good people in relationships, you know, and sometimes that means you have to cut other people off and cut them somewhat out of your life or at least reduce their influence on you. And that can be difficult, but it's for your own self-preservation, honestly. And it's important to do in business. It's important to do in life. Well, and it's like getting rid of the baggage in your life. And this was like a trend, you know, years ago um, where that was a thing. Like people are baggage and you need to. Um, but that is the one thing that you can get gain mm -hmm. oh, from yeah. osmosis. So stick with me. You're not going to get the brand knowledge from just, you know, um, you're going to have to put it into practice, right? But I guarantee you, even if you're a silent participant, even if you're just sitting there reading in this chat, well, not never this one, but you know what I mean? Like if you're witnessing someone being not nice, unproductive, critical, right. negative time and time again, I don't care if you're participating or not, it's still going to affect you. And whether it's going sure. to make you a more unhappy, unproductive, just whatever un person, it's going to happen. Like it's, it's yeah. science. Yeah. And, you know, we always like to think, oh, I can just change them. No, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it takes far more powerful things than that. So, you know, just take that with a grain of salt, but it's just good business advice, good uh, relationship advice. Oh, All right. Our last one, one is. Do you want me to be the person again? Uh, or I can read if you want. Oh, why don't you do that? 
This one's from RV There Yet, which is a great name. Oh, anyway. yeah, and we love RV There Yet. So it's on our last video, uh, how to fail at everything, um, or how to fail at eBay and win, rather. Failure to me is not meeting or exceeding my own expectations. It's causing pain and degradation to another, and it's not being the best Aww. steward of what I've already been given. That being said, failure to me is not a permanent statement or a final step. It's transitory and motivating. I'm a huge believer in do-overs. Preach! <laughs> What else do you say to that? I mean, yes. Yes. I mean, life is nothing but do-overs, right? And starting an eBay business or running an eBay is do it's a bunch of do-overs. Like you're gonna mess stuff up. You're gonna mess up a lot of things, big and small, and you're gonna have to do them over again. And then you're gonna have to do them over again after that. And that's just the way it goes. And you, you have to embrace that on some level. And learn to celebrate your failures. I know that for some of you, that's a bit of a stretch, um, but you are never gonna learn if you're perfect all the time. You're right. never going to grow. You're never going to expand your horizons, all that mumbo jumbo, hokey pokey stuff. It's true. That's why everybody positive and successful tells you that yeah. failure is good. Yeah, it really is. It's the only way you learn anything. Um, let's see what other questions. I thought I saw a few here in the chat. Do um, we run sales on promotions, for example? Elizabeth wants to know. Where is that one? Promoted stuff. Are you running sales or promotions? Um, yes, we do from time to time. The promoted listings... Eh, I, I, I feel like the promoted listings for eBay right now, they don't quite have it right. And they've obviously had a big issue with reporting for almost two months now. The reporting has not been accurate, which is really frustrating because you don't really know how well you're doing or not doing. But I just think in general, the, again, this goes back to the what changes theory of helping your sales. I've noticed I've ran at least two different promotions over the last month or so. And both times, right away, I noticed a pop in sales, and then it dropped to like nothing. And that makes me think, again, everything was having to get sort of re-indexed by the, by the website, by the databases, and my sales, you know, my listings probably got pushed up. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I got sales from them, which was great. But then after that all, you know, after a day or two, that all went away and everything went back to normal. So I'm not a big fan of the promoter listings. Marking stuff down and get rid of it. You can try that. Um, but, you know, sometimes you got to wait on things. I mean, you just got to wait for the right buyer. I mean, I don't, you have to wait forever. But, you know, 30 days is not too long. Even 180 days sometimes is not too long. It just depends on what the item is. And I, I, didn't, I wasn't laughing at what you were saying. Yeah. Um, but Rob Curlin, <laughs> our friend, uh, did a super chat. Thank you, Rob, as always. We adore great, you. And great uh, advice but, there. But this is his advice. And obviously, we're much happier as a result because we've been following it. But Rob will tell you over and over again, turn off cable news. Yeah, maybe even turn off the news. Yeah, it's hard to be. It's hard to. I don't know too many optimistic people who spend a lot of time watching the news. Mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong about that, but I've never met too many of them. Like, yeah, I watch a lot of news and they're optimistic and, you know, positive about what's going to happen in their life. And you're, they tend to be the other direction because it's hard to watch that stuff and not be affected by it. Um, do you offer free returns? We no, um, not but, on purpose. But, so, but since we've done so much free shipping in a way, you know, you know, like I've had a couple where people have had to pay for it to go back, but sometimes people will try, you know, I, for a while there, I was, I was accepting all returns, no matter what the reason. And I decided to, you know, be a little more uh, of a stickler about some of the items not as described because some of them were just silly. And that's, you know, that kind of gets you into your own, another whole set of circumstances that can be kind of frustrating sometimes, to be honest with you, but we're not doing free ship, uh, free uh, returns right now. So the whole uh, stop watching the news thing, Rob, I don't know if you remember this, but this was, we had this conversation a year ago, right? It yeah. Was, it was yeah. A, a year ago where we first started talking about this. You see that one? Um, they missed uh, the Halloween Glenn. background. So it is almost Halloween and we are going to do a Halloween show. God yeah. And we are going to dress up. Yeah, you know I will. Um, but we're going to bring back the background and we're going to, we're actually going to do something really special on Tuesday. Uh, so stay tuned for that, you know, the normal stuff, but uh, it will be back. Balk. So James asked a great question. Really? He, he what did says, you say? how do I get started if I live in a one bedroom apartment, have no space for storage, storage rooms? Great mm -hmm. question. 
I don't know that I would spend money on storage rooms. So my question is, have you really maximized, and I'm going to ask, and maybe you have, the vertical space where ah. you live? Because a lot of people miss that part. They go mm -hmm. kind of, they spread out horizontally, but they don't think about going vertically. Now, you could get storage bins. Uh, we don't have that one here, do we? No. Nope. Like we have that will stack right on top of each other. And granted, it's a pain when you sell something in the bottom one and you have to move the other three. But that is one solution that you can use. You can go vertical with them. Um, don't forget the lid. Even if you don't think you're going to use it. True, true, true story. Uh, use the lid. You know, be creative. Stack stuff on top of a washer and dryer until you need it. Um, you use, know, use the linen closet. That's vertical space that people don't usually use. You can put four bins on top of a washer if you stack them correctly, like two and two. Yep. Um, just things like that. You could keep stuff in your car if you have a car. Uh, that's a possibility. Depends on what it is because, you know, you're exposing it to heat and cold. Yeah. So you have to be a little more careful with that. But those are some ideas if you don't have a lot of space. Um, yeah, look around. The vertical space, we suggest that to people all the time that have a small space. Don't, again, you don't have to go right out and right. rent a storage unit until you're ready and able to pay for it. Right. That's just under the bed. Somebody suggested that. Oh true. yeah. You know, you Great. can, you can but pick possible. Up. Not everybody has a space, under but the if bed. you have a space under the bed, you can actually get those. We get them. My mom gets them cheap all the time. It's like a shoe storage thingy and it has a lid. And so if you have pets or whatever, it doesn't matter, but that that'll fit all the way. It's, it has a name. I don't know what it is, but it's like a trundle box thing and it goes under the bed. It's perfect. That's a great idea. Whoever said that. Yeah. I think that was a, uh... Amazon storage bed frame for 99 bucks fits bins underneath. Oh, that's a bed frame, even better. Um, so yeah, um, those are all potential options if you're in a one bedroom apartment. Um, and I've been in a one bedroom apartment before and sold on eBay. So it's definitely possible. I don't know, I'd stack a thousand jeans in there. That might be tricky, <laughs> but you can do it. There, there's been people who have done it with even smaller spaces like that and make it work. I would try to avoid spending money on storage buildings if you can help it. It's just money out of your pocket. It comes around the business. So mm -hmm. shelving as well, Adam said, but you can't always put shelves up in, a, in an apartment. Um, you can't make all those modifications to the walls. And that's the only thing you get into there. Uh, let's see. There's a couple other things here. Um, yeah, basically use what you've got. Try not to spend a lot of money and put yourself in debt before you're even out of the gate. You can, you'll get there. Have Russ, patience. Russ said everyone should purchase your spreadsheet. Mention it, guys. The best $15 I spent. <laughs> Thanks for the plug, Russ. Um, I'm not even sure the link is down there in the description, but I think it is. Um, and we will be doing an update to the spreadsheet. I'm working on something really, really cool. I don't want to say any more than that um, for that whole concept. That's not nice. Well, you know, I, I, I can't. You know, I can't go any further away than that. But um, we'll see. And it might not come to fruition by the beginning of the year. So that's the only problem. Okay, so one of the benefits to selling like a bazillion jeans like we do um, is that I get first pick, right? And sometimes I'll buy a pair just in the hopes that maybe I'll get to keep it. So anyway, long story short, oh, yeah. when am I ever short? Well, anyway, um, I finally found the Levi's that I love the most. And for me, it's a 529 and I think they're skinny or something. Anyway, I adore them. Never have I worn a pair of jeans that I loved even more. So I'm doing this rugby team mom thing and it involves a purple Sharpie and boys turning in paperwork late. Anyway, I got a big purple Sharpie marker line on my favorite pair of Levi's 529s. And True. I can never, like I, I struggle to find them. Like we have one pair in the entire inventory. So. I'm literally brokenhearted and I'm thinking I'm going to go on eBay. I got to ask my friends, whatever. So, and it's, it's a plug, but it's not a plug. So Tiffany, I just want to show you guys this, right? Tiffany introduced us to this grandma's, which way? Pull it, come towards you a little. Oh, it's so, so grandma's super secret spot remover, right? Yep. So she just swears by this stuff and we use it on shoes. We use it on clothing. I've used it on other stuff. Um, I kid you not people. Uh, in tears, I'm spraying it on this purple Sharpie, Sharpie marker mark, and I wash them, and it's the purple Sharpie marker mark is gone. Hallelujah, my jeans <laughs> have been saved. <laughs> and so I really, did I not like run around the house yeah, like a little she is, kid? Yeah, really excited, yeah. Like it's magic it's in a stuff. bottle, so. Whew. That's a really good uh, rating on uh, Amazon. It sure does, because it's a real deal. It's good stuff. Yeah. So whenever we have something that works, we will surely tell you.
Yep. So grandma's secret, super secret spot remover and magic erasers. There you go. It's not very secret. I think everybody knows about it. No, but I don't even know what's in it, but it's, it, it's best, this, best you don't ask. It's this delightful, um, elderly woman. Um, and she looks happy. It says any kind of stain. Well, we know. Adam asked where you can get it. Um, we have, uh, there's a, there's a link to it in, in the description of this video to our mm -hmm. Amazon products and so on. Yeah. Look at it um, like, like down there. There's a link for it in the Amazon, but this, yep. I don't, it's not that expensive. And we've it's had not. this like, for, was it four bucks, three bucks, five oh, bucks? Was it? It's, it's not that bad. Um, and we, you get it on prime, it'll ship to you free. Um, but we've had this one for almost a year and it's still good. Like it's, yeah. you don't oh, yeah. go through it quick at all. We've it's not it like you times. have to sh 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 put a bunch on it. I did because I was freaking out. <laughs> Um, but she it brought it down. She's like, is that out? And I'm like, I think it's gone. I, I, like, really? see it. I had so. to do a double take and I wish I could show you. It would be really awkward and I'll break something. Yeah, but let's... I really did like there was this line and I was and it's gone. And I'm so like, you don't need, I'm over the moon that I didn't have to give up my favorite pair of jeans. Uh, Karen, what was the name of it again? Seriously? Oh, here, just look. Grandma's uh, secret spot remover. It's called it's a laundry spray. And I think any product by this company is good. There's a link down there um, to get you there. But any any of these products, they sell a big one, they sell a small one. I think they even have like a roll-on thingy. Yeah. We've only ever had this one. And I use it, I can spot clean with it with a toothbrush on just about anything. Like I, ha like I use it on other things. But mm -hmm. I used it on this purple Sharpie marker mark and it's gone. Like it... It was amazing. Like, I don't suggest you now go color on your jeans with Sharpies. <laughs> no, um, don't do that. Please right don't do that. Uh, but it was amazing. Like, it was cool. And it does work on other things. Like, we use it on on shoes, on other clothes, on right. other spots on jeans. Right. So, there right. you go. All right. So, hopefully that made sense for you guys on how to start a business on eBay selling jeans. And um, if you want to pick up more info about selling jeans, as we mentioned earlier, Women's Jeans Brand Guide is available for pre-order, $29.99. There's a link down below. Yes, it's a shameless plug, but, but it's really good. And it's going to tell you a lot of stuff we just told you. You're not going to have to figure out 10 brands. We're going to give you 101 of them to go find. And gosh darn it, we worked hard on it. So let us talk. It took a lot of work. <laughs> We're going to talk about it. And it took hours, like hours really to put did. it together. It was not like, like days. Oh, we'll knock this out in a couple of, no, that was not the case at all. Um, I'm not even sure how many hours we spent on a total, but yeah, we, yeah, it, it was a, just, trust me. It was a lot, yeah, a lot so, of one and 2 AM in the morning, like, uh, but it, whether you use the guide or not, in, in any case, you can absolutely add jeans to your business. You can make it a niche that you get into and you're going to see steady profits with it. They don't take up a tremendous amount of space. You can get them fairly cheaply and they are widely available. When you walk into an average Goodwill or thrift store, you're going to see two, three, four hundred pair a lot of times. So you're going to have a lot to pick from. And they rotate through them fairly regularly because people drop them off all the time. Um, so definitely a great niche to get involved with. Denim's durable. It's timeless. And gosh darn it, people like it. Yes. Um, yes, Russ. The link is to our equipment down below in the description. He yeah. Asked. And that'll bring you right to it. Yeah. Um, and goes to our Amazon page where we have all the stuff that we recommend and we use. And on a comment on one of our recent videos, um, somebody made the delightful suggestion and I meant to bring it up. So we'll give credit where credit is due. Um, but much to Jason's chagrin, uh, we're going to close with a little bit of a different jingle today. Oh, and I promise we won't sing the whole song because I've been singing it all day. Um, but as we close today, we just want to say. Well, we normally say. It's good sales to you, right? We normally say this is Prof Sales and Karn saying good sales to you. But instead, today we're going to do it a little different. All so right, let's go ahead. see what the people think, right? All right. Me, me, me. Happy sales to you till we meet again. again. Bye. Bye.